Hey everyone, Matt from SoundRolling.com. Thank you very much for joining me uh, for my little live hangout uh, with Simon from Ursa Straps. Just checking that everything's still working on your end. There's a little delay in this kind of live video, and you will know that it's live. There will be a live uh, kind of symbol somewhere, so you may be watching the replay. And if so, welcome again. Uh, what we're going to be talking about uh, essentially is essential kind of tips and trips for radio miking. Um, loads of people uh, just getting in touch generally throughout all different videos, all different kind of questions um, in regards to placement, in regards to hiding, in regards to rustling. And it's an absolutely massive topic to try and cover. Uh, so me and Simon are basically just going to riff on kind of the three main sections. The three main sections kind of be hiding the pack, hiding the actual uh, transmit, no, the actual radio mic, wherever you actually want it to be. It's an ideal placement, depending on costume, that kind of thing. And then we're going to join the two dots together with obviously the cable, because lots of people have trouble uh, with cable management and that kind of thing as well. Um, but first, obviously, let me introduce Simon and Ursa Straps. So Simon, give me the lowdown on Ursa Straps and your new innovations there. All right. Hello, Matt. Um, thank you for having me this afternoon. Um, yeah, uh, Ursa Straps, it's been like two years now almost. It's been a long time sort of prototyping, getting to getting actually a product that we were amazed that we even had a product. Um, and yeah, so we, uh, basically I'm, I, I, my partner and I uh, developed them while we were working in film and TV. We still are. At the time I was working as a boom operator. So we spent a lot of time on set. She worked in costume, doing standby work and some design work. So Together, we've both experienced both sides of the problem, which is the daily problem of trying to hide and make that radio mic sound good, which more is becoming more and more important. Um, and it's something which any any tools that you can bring to the table to help with that. Uh, I, I was always playing around trying to make things or develop things that make my life easier and make costume happier, basically. Um, and so it just naturally, we kind of, played around and came up with the straps. Um, yeah, so I don't know where to start really, but yeah, talking specifically about radio mics and where we put them and stuff. Um, yeah, uh, there's so much to say. Uh, and uh, I, there are some little secrets I'm probably not gonna wanna go into too much. So, <laughs> but we'll sort, of, uh, we'll sort of chat and yeah, just, yeah, what, what, what is it? How would you like to start, I guess? Yeah, I mean, basically what everyone's gonna be able to do as well is there should be a little comment uh, box or live thing uh, for asking us general questions. Again, like Simon said, absolutely massive, massive area, but we want you to definitely come away uh, with a few different tips for those kind of three different areas. So I guess the the first thing we'll get started with is there's basically, uh, in my mind, kind of, uh, I guess kind of four main places that you can hide um, a transmitter pack, like in general, um, one being, uh, in a pocket, in an actual costume, in something um, that isn't too kind of obtrusive and is secure enough and that kind of thing. Um, there is uh, around the waist, very classic, small at the back. Mm -hmm. There's the thigh and there's the the ankle as well, yeah. uh, which is proven very popular, yeah. um, especially for guys, shorts, that kind of thing. Thighs for uh, more girls and skirts kind of vibe. And then uh, small at the back, um, I guess for things like coats or just anything in general. Mm. Um, and then obviously putting it in pockets is not usually, I haven't found, yeah, it, it's only if it works or if people really, really don't want anything on them. But I guess just give us a, a rundown, uh, starting from the bottom to the top, I guess, um, ankle, ankle straps. Yeah, ankle straps, mostly for men. We've, in my experience, men are quite um, happy to have, to have them on. We don't usually put ankles on women. Um, really handy to have ankle straps. Um, you generally, people forget they're wearing them, which is the, absolutely the best scenario for radio mics, is for them to wander off set and go, oh, I completely forgot that was on me. So that's great. And ankles are quite, uh, if someone's wearing any kind of trouser, really, as unless they're really, really tight trousers, you can get away with an ankle strap. Um, I, I've got a thing I use with them. This is the Sound Guys Solutions. Can you see that? The lab yep. bullet, I've got green ta tape on it because we lose these quite a lot. So that helps find it uh, when it's in your pocket or in a bag or something. So you put that on the um, transmitter like that. And well, this is the DPA. So like that just drops straight down the leg. And that we find with ankle straps, I always try to take one of these in my pouch when we go to radio mic someone because 
the last thing you want to do is be trying to put a plug down near someone's privates and try to pull that thing down. It's really awkward. So I recommend anyone that does a lot of ankle strap work rigs with one of those. Um, there, there are other solutions, rods and things you can pull down. And uh, but personally, I've just been using those as, as a go to solution for just getting the body thing down the leg. Um, and yeah, we you can use an ankle strap. Or it, you can also put an ankle strap a bit higher up on the leg, but they're usually a bit too thin for thighs. Um, but yeah, I'd really recommend that as a that as a sort of go to placement. Um, the only slight concern with ankle straps is that sometimes the cables just aren't long enough to go all the way up the back. If it's a tall person, say six foot tall, all the way up the back and around here, and then in a tie, for example, the cable just you just want a bit more length. Um, so generally, if I'm putting a mic in a tie and someone's quite tall, I might try to put it on a waist or higher up the body, but in addition, if you put a transmitter in an ankle and you're quite far away, you're going to get lower range. So it's definitely something to consider there and to remember that, oh, that person's on an ankle. Are you sure that's a good idea? They're sitting in a car, you know, so therefore it's going to be right under all this metal work. So uh, generally, uh, you do, you, I go to the ankles, my, my start point. Yeah. Nice yeah, sure yeah you know. no, no, that's good. I was just thinking, like, yeah. I've got, I'm six like, foot two, yeah. and I think it, it comes pretty much to my head, which is yeah. uh, quite useful. But yeah, getting it around a tie as well. And right. a lot of people are going, um, I mean, I guess we'll get onto mounting in a sec, whether you go at the front or the back, that kind of thing as yeah. well. Um, and then, but yeah, otherwise, yeah, I've, I've done uh, range tests um, just when I got my uh, antenna fins and doing doing it in the on the small of the back and then at the ankle as well and you do you do lose um you do lose a little bit definitely um, and yeah. especially once you add more people into the scenario and if everyone's wearing anchor mounts then <laughs> yeah, you need, it, it definitely affects it but also if you're using a thigh strap and someone's sitting down and crosses their legs it's like you've lost signal almost completely because you've got just fat surrounding transmitter aerial so you can quite often find with transmitters on thighs that they can get, they, they're quite low range as well. So you have to be aware of that as well. Um, but yeah, um, thigh straps, really important to have in the arsenal. Some jobs you barely ever use them. Sometimes like, um, I, the current job I'm doing is a lot of police uniforms, lots of people in trousers. You never really have any big ballroom scenes or dances or, or anyone in sort of outfits for, for parties. I guess which where you have like slender sort of like dresses and tight costumes. We've mostly been able to get away without them, but then occasionally you have jobs where you just need them all the time, and it's usually period jobs. Um, and um, we use them a lot on Peaky Blinders series three. On the leading ladies, almost exclusively we wore thighs because they had very slender center waists. We really couldn't hide the pack there. We would give the uh, costume people the strap and the pack and the mic, have it all plugged in and put on sleep, and they would rig it. So the slightly awkward sort of fumbling around up under the dress is something we try to leave to costume and and they they were absolutely fine doing that. And I'd sort of recommend tackling thigh straps like that. You leave somebody else to rig them and then you just explain how you'd like the cable to be run best as possible. If it's in, into a bra, you just say, okay, just just rig it up there down on the side, take it under the strap of the bra and then just leave it hanging and I'll stick it down when she gets on set. And generally, I find that's better to work like that. So with anything with the ladies, it's really, really important to have a very good relationship with the person who's actually looking after that person so that you can, uh, so you have a, so they understand what you want to do and they're, they're on side. Uh, yeah. yeah. Almost the most important thing about radio mics is not pissing off the costume department. <laughs> you just, Definitely. That's, sort of, that's sort of the beginning of getting good sound. If you annoy them, who's going to want to help you out if you're in trouble, they're going to, they're going to sort of, shoot you down if you want to try and improve it or make it it's like you know you it's a it's a compromise but yeah thigh straps are really handy and our thigh straps have some features that don't exist on other thigh straps um so check that out <laughs> but yeah. yeah i mean i have i have one of them here and basically the um what you've done which is really clever is just you've got the um uh, i don't know how best to describe the kind of plastic nature of it it's not plastic it's polyurethane so that stuff on tights or, or uh, to hold up um, leggings or to hold up um, stockings. So it's totally safe against the skin. So it's a hypoallergenic gripper. 
Um, so we've just taken a much larger chunk of it and applied it to our, bonded it onto our fabric. I mean, so, and, the, and the main trick as well is that that just means that they don't fall down. The classic thing with yeah. um, ankle straps um, is that, I mean, with thigh straps even, is that especially if it's tights or anything like that, then it just ends up sliding down. I typically find when I'm using the thigh strap, it's literally just because it's like a, um, a tight top and a skirt and that's the kind of thing. So you can't do the ankle, obviously. And then, um, yeah, it's important to remember, obviously, oh, yeah. you've got to have your... Um, Radio might pack the aerial facing down as well <laughs> when you rig those as well. Are you still there? I think everything's still working. Ah, oh, I think we appear Slide. to have. Oh yes, you're back now. Yeah, I think we're getting this to work. That's okay. Meanwhile, we have some questions already coming through, which is fantastic. Um, and so Greg says, uh, can you repeat about the ankle straps having less range? Essentially, because it's lower to the floor, you're only getting, uh, you're getting essentially less chance of that signal kind of um, hitting your antennas in kind of like layman's terms, I guess. Um, so essentially that means there's, I mean, there's, uh, if you look on my YouTube channel afterwards, it can be, it's the Betso, um, range tests and so that's basically just giving you um yeah when you have a lower antenna then you get less range unless you're higher up again so you essentially the higher up any sort of aerial is the better the less interference there is um, and obviously having it quite close to the floor uh, that just means that you're gonna get um, you're gonna get some problems and issues there uh, does Ursa provide some solutions for hair mounting? Not yet that I know of. We're just trying to get Simon back on. Just going to double check that everything's fine there. Um, but yeah, it's great to have people on. So let me just finish off by saying that you obviously want your, um, when you're mounting, you want to make sure that on your thigh strap, the aerial's pointed down. Um, it can be tricky if something's white as well, depending how short it is, uh, meaning that you have to get it kind of higher up the leg or lower down the leg. Um, and then I guess we move on to the waist pack. And hopefully, Simon will be able to join me back. But do get in those comments. You can do it right now while we're still live. And um, yeah, hopefully this is all really useful information so far. And you're going to be able to see the... Uh, some of the replay of this, I think. <laughs> uh, Ursa chest straps. I have not. We're slowly working our way up the body. So at the moment, we've uh, just covered the ankle strap. Now we're covering the thigh strap. And now we're going to go onto the waist strap. Um, once I figure out where Simon's gone, I think we just had a bit of a lag of the internet. Maybe he's uh, repositioning all of his stuff down there. But um, Moving on to waist strap, uh, the key thing about the waist strap is, again, it's going to fit in the small of the back, generally. This is really good for if you have coats. This is really good if you have um, kind of baggier t-shirts. Um, and we're, ah, we're getting more questions. Can't think of, <laughs> we've got the earth straps versus sweat. Well, what's really good is that they're, they are super thin, but they are, and flexible. But yeah, they're not. The thing is that with them being thinner, they're not so heavy, so they're not just soaking up masses and masses and masses of sweat. Um, I think the problem for any actor, especially when you have all the lights, camera, and everything else going on, uh, is that it's, yeah, it just makes it really hard for it to not get sweaty. So, yeah. Well, so let's move on to the waist strap. Um, yeah, so waist strap simply goes straight around the waist. It's probably the, the most well-known uh, position to kind of have it. Again, depending on your type of transmitter, I also brought along a G3 as well, um, compared to, say, like a Electrosonics the, with a Fluffy. Uh, the Electrosonics being much thinner. Again, the thinner your transmitter, the kind of easier it is to hide. So that's essentially going to help with hiding in the small of the back G3s. Uh, can be tricky as well. And also another thing with range about that is antennas, as soon as they start to touch 
um, people or anything. Basically, moisture destroys a uh, radio signal. It just absorbs everything. So when you have it on the small of your back, what you want to do is you want to get, uh, you can get like a hush lav, or it's essentially like a little mount uh, specifically for uh, something like a COS 11, because that's the same kind of size as the aerial. So let me just quickly knock one up. And what you can do is you can just get a little mount. This is another little mount, uh, but you can just slide that on. And then if that's staying away from the body, then what you're going to do is actually get a lot more range than if it was on the inside of someone touching them. Uh, and you can use multiple ones of these. Uh, so you could have one like here, one here, one here. Um, so yeah, that's definitely something to look into, uh, regardless of your miking situation, whether it's a G3 or anything else. Um, uh, Alan asks, how do you handle bathroom breaks with an ankle and thigh strap? Well, with an ankle strap, it's super easy because it's on their ankles. So there's only a wire going down the side of the body. And with a thigh strap, then it's a little more annoying, definitely. Um, but what would happen is, is you would you can rotate the mic uh, away from the inside part, and then uh, and then take it even take it off. Obviously, whatever's the most convenient, um, and just get that re-rigged afterwards. Um, good tip is always making sure that the talent go to the toilet before miking. Can can work sometimes. It's always worth a try. Um, Darren asks, do you ever get resistance from actors from using straps versus clipping it to their waist or pants? I personally go for whatever's going to be uh, more comfortable for them in that sort of scenario. For instance, if it's a waist strap versus uh, just clipping it on. If I can get away with uh, clipping it on and there's no problems with that, I'm fine to clip it on. Um, but some people don't, um, yeah, just don't like that. Uh, Jeff says that he's not purchased the ankle strap yet. He's used the thigh strap as, as an ankle strap. It's something you can totally do. Um, I, I used to have. Again, if you if you're thinking about uh, budget, you can uh, obviously use like multiple waistband ones, but it just means that it gets a lot thicker. Uh, whereas like a thigh strap, super thin, kind of fit for purpose, unless you have absolutely massive ankles. <laughs> so, and I think we're getting Simon back on board soon. I don't know if he can hear me, but. Um, but yeah, so that's an important tip. And again, it's always negotiating with talent. Um, generally, they want you to get the best sound. They'll understand that there uh, needs to be a radio mic for a certain thing. Um, do I treat uh, straps as expendables? They kind of come in. Yeah, they come. They are factored in to everything, but I, they're not kind of a one-use thing. So they're just generically part of part of my kit personally. Um, then, what else you can do is uh, you, there's lots of other special mounting tips if you're uh, provided um, other uh, kind of parts of costume. For instance, um, I'm trying to think, like I did a one about a bike helmet. Bike helmets are really good for, uh, or hard hats are really good for actually hiding, um, hiding transmitters and even lavaliers, uh, which is amazing. Uh, the trick is just the aerial, because obviously the aerial is quite long. Um, so if you can hide it uh, in that place, then it's good. But generally, I suppose the the ideal scenario is that the the trans transmitter is uh, quite high up upon the body, gets get better range that way, slightly better range. It's not like it absolutely kills it if it's on the ankle. It's just something to think about. Um, Ah, yeah, so everyone's asking about if you, uh, if I charge for these. Yeah, they come under my general kit fee, just if I'm, if I'm bringing them. Again, my main realm of things is uh, short films, feature length films, and kind of corporate stuff, uh, commercials, that kind of stuff, social content that's taken over the world. Um, so let's move on to actual physical placement of the microphone. Um, again, you saw me use earlier the um, these little hush oh, these these are not the hush labs I think but it's very similar to the RM11 I have the RM11s as well here's a white RM11 and the whole idea of that is that that goes straight over the mic like so I always have it sticking out a little bit because then you get better 
sound, obviously, if it's not buried. Um, and that's just a Rycott sticky that's already stuck on there from last time. Um, I find the white ones get dirty quite quickly, which is very annoying, especially with all the tape. I should kind of clean them. You can clean it with the alcohol tape. Um, someone's asking about duct tape. I wouldn't use duct tape um, in terms of mounting. It's, it's quite noisy. Uh, even duct tape, and I guess you're talking about, maybe you're talking about it for a transmitter. Uh, the problem is it just leaves sticky residue. It's just not that great. Um, even if I was mounting it to a hat or anything like that, I would, um, yeah, I'd wrap it in a, in a mount first and then, um, and then be able to go from there. Oh, I'm afraid Simon's having a lot of problems with the internet at the moment, which isn't great. Um, hang, pinch, Velcro, safety, of course. Yeah, what's the best way to hide a mic in a cotton shirt? We're just getting onto that right now. Uh, material, cotton's actually good because it's a lot thicker. Um, it's tricky with, um, with both sides. Uh, it's tricky taping it on both sides um, because uh, you don't, I mean, what I generally do is do one side. I do one side, I stick it down with like a Rycott, Rycott stickies, and they just brought out new ones as well, which you're going to be able to use even more. Um, so you just simply put it on like so. And then I would just stick that to the shirt, but obviously on the inside. And, um, and then it stays in place. I've always found generally when you're sticking it on both sides, the problem is, it, for instance, if you have two shirts, it's just it's also rubbing with everything. Whereas I find if you stick it reverse to the most outer layer, and then on the inside, it's kind of free to kind of absorb without rubber mounting, um, then it's it works much better generally. Um, and multiple layers always get trickier for me with um, with shirts, like if people are wearing two shirts. It's again, it's a case of either you go in the middle of both of them, um, and if it's not showing, then that's great. Uh, and if you have to go underneath both, it gets slightly trickier. But I do use different mounts, and I've got different microphones for different kind of uh, uses. This is a, a lucky, lucky thing to have, uh, DPA, 4071 in its uh, DPA concealer. And that, again, is a, is a really good mounting system. Again, little Rycott sticky stuck underneath the t-shirt. And uh, that should work really well there. Uh, hopefully, Simon's getting the internet sorted, and it's working soon. So he'll be back to talk more about a kind of um, head mounts. Uh, doing it in shirts is really good. Shirts are good because they obviously have buttons um, button and a seam straight down the middle. So you can kind of hide it in between two different buttons. This is great with an RM11. Um, tend to, you can either do it straight or you can do it sideways. Um, doing it sideways might just give you a little more outside of the shirt. Um, otherwise, straight up can be easier, easier to hide. And um, yeah, if you don't have too much hair, that kind of thing. Um, then obviously we've got the chest strap that you can actually use as well underneath. And what they would do, I don't have one with me. Um, I haven't used them that much, to be honest. Uh, but I guess for longer productions, um, longer days of um, filming, you could uh, basically attach an RM11, COS11, any mic, whatever you have. And then you just kind of hang it, and it's already concealed um, underneath uh, all the equipment there, basically. Uh, wind protection for RM11 is what I've been asked. And again, using overcovers. The trick with uh, radio mics when it then comes uh, to using wind protection is just making sure it's not too big. Um, you can use, these are the overcovers. You can get undercovers. And undercovers are basically with a lot less hair. Um, so I've never found uh, that much use uh, with the undercovers, but uh, Ursa Straps have brought out uh, soft circles. And the whole idea about soft circles is that it's uh, kind of better than an overcover. It's using a, 
see, this is where I need Simon back. I'm trying to find them. I had them in my little stash, but everything's all uh, messed up. But essentially, soft circles uh, do the job of uh, lighter wind protection and, um, and also concealment as well. And Simon is back. Just in Hello. time. Yes. I'm it's, really sorry. That's all right. That's all right. Have you gone offline or something? Uh, sorry about that, guys. Um, hang on. One second. No, no, we're still going. So we've, we've basically just kind of talked through the waist strap, um, talked through uh, kind of chest strap, uh, roughly, and just trying to generally mount. And now I started kind of moving on to just uh, different little mic placements that way. But I was just getting on to um, soft circles, because a lot of people are asking me about um, wind protection, because I've showed yeah. them the RM11 and also the concealer. Uh, so what's your take on the on the kind of wind protection issue? Yeah, I kind of, I have sort of a weird thing with wind protection is that mics always sound best when they're exposed, when they have least amount of stuff covering them up. So generally, if, if you're outdoors, I will try to put the mic in an exposed position. If there's no wind, I won't worry about wind protection. So just as a sort of starting point, I, I try to not put any wind protection on as much as possible. Because the moment you start covering it up, then you will you will lose some form of high-end clarity. But, um, but first thing I usually do is I, I keep the mic itself um, uncovered and I just use the costume itself to act as a, as a sign of natural wind protection. So if they've got two layers, maybe you stick it on their skin rather than on one of the layer above the skin. So you just, I try to use the costume to help with that. Or if they're wearing a scarf, obviously great. There's loads of wind protection within, within the fabric of a scarf. Um, uh, but if you are in a situation where you cannot have the mic exposed and you do need to protect it, then there are lots of little cool things. Um, I try to just sort of start with like very basic and then just sort of build up depending on how much you need. Um, and so like, okay, so DPA, this is one of the DPA mics. Um, they do this cool sort of gray ball that you basically slip onto the mic itself. You see that you just, you can just sort of push the mic capsule into this thing and it holds still. And that inside there is actually a little bit of still air, which is basically what you need between wind protection and a mic, you need a bit of still air, which is basically how the Wyco baskets and Snella baskets work. They, they don't, that they give as much space as possible between the actual wind protection layer and the mic. So this is a pretty good starting point for wind protection if you can get away with something that's gray and that big. Um, but if it, if if you don't have DPAs or you don't, these are about twenty five quid each, and you can lose these quite easily, um, especially if someone pulls it and it's sort of it's gone. I've lost about three of these. And there's no point complaining if an actor pulled their mic off and lost these. So um, uh, generally what I'd try and do is use Ryko products because they're the best for wind protection. Um, so let me get some bits and bobs. Um, so like you've probably all seen these things. This is a large, one of the new essentials, Ryko essentials, wind, wind furries. And... Um, and one of their um, sort of stickers, stickies with a hole in, called a sticky-o. Um, and um, what I tried to do is, you can either just want use one of these and a sticky and just jam it onto the exposed mic itself. Um, or you can sort of cover the very end of this Ryko concealer and sort of apply it over it. So it would come up and it would stick around like that. Does that make sense? Ah, so okay, yeah. Rolling it over. So if you sort of take, can you see that? If yep. these stick yours. So you sort of take it off, stick it to this here, apply it like that, and then you take it off, and then you stick it kind of like that, and then that gets stuck to a costume, and then there's an air gap between there and the cap, and that works quite well for wind protection and allows you to keep using the whatever suspension that you normally use. Because I, I generally quite like using these, no matter what they're wearing. But well, this is a concealer, but I've chopped it down with a pair of scissors, by the way, if you're wondering what that is. Um, yeah, so yeah, wind protection, sort of, using these quite a lot. Um, soft circles, oh, for a range of soft circles, this is a black one. And they come in um, little bags, so you can get sort of bags of white ones. This looks like drugs, doesn't it? Uh, but yeah, no, this is sort of a little bag of white uh, soft circles. And I generally sort of use these 
um, sort of to cover up and doing the same, essentially the same thing with the stickio and the overcover. But also there are some cool little things you can do with these. Like um, uh, I was taking the mic out of a concealer. And then if you put this like that, and then you put the mic in the concealer like that, does that make sense? And then you fold it over and then you apply sticky to there, to that back bit there, you've then got a little bit of basic wind protection inside a concealer, which allows you to keep the top of the concealer uncovered, which is quite nice because they work best when they're not really covered up. Um, does that make sense? Can you, is that clear? Yeah, yeah okay. no, that's really good. And a lot of people um, uh, are just chiming in as well because they showed, it'll obviously work for the, the RM11 as well. Um, yeah. And they're saying mole, mole skin on the other yeah. side um, works really well as well for just dampening down. Um, and Greg asks, what is mole skin? And I'm, I'm trying to think of how to describe it. It's well, basically... Is, yeah, it's not a trademark thing. It's not a product. It's basically yeah. soft fabric, sort of a woolen, sort of woven soft fabric. It's, like I, a bit, it's a bit shredded as well at the top, isn't it? Yeah, or something. It's got, a brush, it's got a brush surface. The fabric, a fabric with a brush surface, I think, sort of broadly describes mole skin and what it's about. Um, and what we've tried to do recently is because we do a lot of tie mics and it's really tricky to wind protect tie mics. Uh, they're sort of getting into sort of wind and ties and stuff like this. It's just a nightmare. Um, and almost sometimes it's just not worth trying to add more bulk to a mic inside a tie because you end up just getting in trouble with costume because you've got a, a gaping hole in the middle of a tie and it doesn't really look very good. But so what you really want is if you, if you have to put it in the tie, but you still need some wind protection. Um, I'd recommend um, soft circles, basically, because as much as they're great for w avoiding wind protection, it's very difficult to put one of these inside a tie and not create a massive lump. And um, so what we've done is, I'll just give me a second here. Yeah, no worries. And again, guys, we're still alive, amazingly. Yeah. So this do is, ask well, questions. Thanks for hanging around. Uh, I literally uh, had to move my router upstairs closer so I would get signal down here. Um, uh, and it might go again. Um, so I use double-sided sticky tape called Super Tape, and it's a uh, hypoallergenic super sticky tape. And I, I love this stuff because it's used for putting on wigs and stuff like this. You can get other tapes, but I just use the stuff called sticky tape, Super Tape. But what you can do is if you get a, if you cut a little bit of it off like that, and then you apply it round a mic. Now this could work not just in ties, but in in other sort of usages of, of you putting a mic on someone and hiding it under a button or wanting to get a little bit of protection on a mic. Okay, so, so there you can see I put sticky tape and I put it all the way around the cap of the mic. And then you take the soft circle and you just sort of, let's do this in a way that's easy to show. You just sort of stick it like that there, fold it over, allow for a little bit of air there's got to be a little bit of an air gap if you can sort of see there's a little bit of an air gap then you fold it over like that and like that and then if you want to you can get a pair of scissors and just sort of cut down the sides a little bit maybe it's like di like blue peter or something so this is one i made earlier or didn't um so it's a little bit less bulky, but there you go. So that's actually low profile wind protection. And it's because it's nice and soft, and this is essentially like a moleskin fabric, that won't create rustle. That will provide a bit of spacing for the mic and it will give it the sort of wind protection that would avoid heavy breaths, light breezes. But yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Cool. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Yeah. Um, and you can do that with COS 11s, um, and you can do that with um, DPAs. Countrymen, we did it with the oh, Countrymen in ties. Nightmare. They pick up so much wind, so so awful for wind countrymen. But they they are good because they're so small. So we we put one. We did this with a countryman the other day, with a guy running down a street, and we didn't have any wind. Uh, got a lot of rustle though, um, just because sometimes are horrible. Um, but yeah. Um, but there's another thing you can do. We've recently got a new product out, which we haven't really announced yet. But basically, it's a moleskin tape, and it's we're calling it Ursa tape and with soft strips. And so we make doing them in four colors, and this is brown, black, and white, and we'll do one in beige as well. 
and you can cut this in little shapes and stick that around a mic as well in a similar sort of way. So you get a little strip of it. And then you can apply a little bit of black moleskin to a mic or over a concealer. So that's a nice little bit of soft tape. And then you could apply that if you wanted to onto a concealer like that to disguise the concealer or to provide a bit of like dampening of smoothening off at the top. So that's really handy there as well. So that's that's the tape. We haven't launched it yet. So new soon. <laughs> Exclusive. Exclusive. I love yeah, it. I love you it. Um, yeah. You want to talk uh, about uh, chest straps and that sort of thing? Yeah, 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 have you talked about that already? Uh, a little bit. I mean, I, yeah, I'd love for you to ch chime in as well on that. Yeah. I mean, like, sometimes if you have a sweaty, hairy person, literally, and you they're just wearing a T-shirt, the only thing you can do, uh, other than stick it on a T-shirt or stick it very much at the top of the seam here and then stick it all the way around the back, is to put some kind of strap on them. And um, we're not the only pe company making straps like this. There's um, Neopax do a chest belt, and there's Garfield. They do a lav strap of some kind, and Sound Guys Solutions do one as well. So, but I think what makes ours slightly different is that there's gripper on it. It's much thinner fabric, and there's gripper on it, and the, these things do tend to slip quite a lot. So, uh, uh, do you have one to demonstrate? I do. Uh, too. Unfortunately. All right. Okay. Well, basically, I've got one here. Um, so it's a strap. It's like this sort of length. It's and it's got a pouch on it, so you can put. Can you see that there? So you put your RM11 or your concealer in there in the middle pouch, and you can put. There's a small section there for a COS11 and a large section there for a DPA. So you can put all sorts of microphones in the pouch, and then it's got this nice gripper here. That's tacky grapper, and that's also this little section here. So you can put the cable through there, wound it through, and then put the mic in there. And it all sort of like stays firmly to the body without needing more tape. Um, and yeah, and it Velcros to itself with this nice low profile Velcro at the end. And how have people been taking it on board? Like, have you had much chance to use it on sale? Yeah, they, they, I've used it a few times on jobs. It's kind of rare you need to use them, to be honest. But you need to have something, I think, for, for those rare occasions where you just have to deal with a very sweaty, hairy chest and you need some kind of solution to this. But the people have used them for dance shows. I think someone used it for a show which involved a lot of people dancing all day long and they knew they were going to have trouble with radio mics. So they use these and apparently they work really well. Um, I know they're being used, they bought them in Sweden uh, and in Denmark for the, uh, for a sh well, they're going to be used on the Eurovision apparently for miking up some of the dance and performance for Eurovision. So I'd imagine they're pretty confident that they're going to work if they're going to be used for live shows like that. Um, yeah, I mean, we've used them quite a bit, usually for men, not so much for women. With women, it's pretty difficult because the, the strap would end up being quite low. But with guys, you just try to get it just sort of under, just in the sort of solar plexus, just a bit lower than the solar plexus, you know. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Um, and again, just we're going back because obviously we've got loads of people watching um, at all different levels as well, which is exciting. Right. And everyone's uh, joining in uh, with each other on the comments as well. So just to go back and the, the whole idea of the kind of moleskin fabric and I guess yeah. any kind of padding, the concealers, yeah. uh, the any sort of mount that you have, the whole point is, is you're trying to get the fabric away from the actual mic capsule. And so you've got like an insulated um, almost environment uh, for your microphone capsule. And then, so when you mount it, there's not all this kind of rubbing yeah. fabric noise. Yeah. Essentially. You want to keep the cap free. For, if you've got a difficult fabric, and most fabrics are, if you put your ear to them and move them around, that's what the mic's going to hear multiplied. So, um, so, yeah, generally it's all about trying to create a separation, an air gap between the mic and the fabric. And, um, and either just jamming them together as much as possible so when they move, they move together, so there's less actual movement. There's that solution to things. Having a concealer, for example, on RM11 and stick both sides of it together. So you actually, but if someone's got a T-shirt or a vest with buttons and they do that, then it will actually kind of unpeel. And, and sometimes, you know, so sometimes sticking two layers together works really well. Other times, depending on what they're doing and what actions they've got, it might have the negative effect. But um, one thing that I'll show, which is a trick I use quite a lot, and I'm quite happy, well, I use it a lot. And I don't know why more people don't use it. Um, it's using makeup sponge. 
using oh, okay. makeup sponge, and I managed to get my hands on some of this black makeup sponge, and this is like gold dust because I can't buy it anymore. Um, so literally, I'm onto my last little bag of black makeup sponge. But I take this stuff; it's really nice and soft, really soft to the touch, barely makes a noise. It's a lot like Hush Labs, which are very similar fabric. It's black, it's dark, and you can cut it up and ta tape it onto things. So I found myself quite often taking uh, taking some of that, most taking some of this, or cutting up a um, cutting up a Hush Lab, which is pretty expensive though, a pound each. But you cut them up and then you apply sticky tape to the back of them. Right, so this is a hush lab cut in two and, and sort of shortened a little bit. And then you can apply that onto a concealer. So if you've really got problems with a fabric that's rustling, you can take a bit of foam like this and stick it onto a concealer like that. Right, so that's created a lump. And if you can maybe stick that on some skin here, then the fabric will basically separate. It, it, will, it will rub against the foam and it won't rub against the concealer. And so just doing that, I, I usually have a load of these standing by in my drawer. And if I've got a problem, like they're the first thing I go and do, like right, just stick some foam on it. And, and usually foam will, will help you out a great deal. And it's obviously acoustically transparent. So it doesn't really get in the way if you do end up sort of covering the mic. Um, but yeah, I'd recommend playing around with foam if you're really stuck. Um, yeah. Well, it's, I think this is a perfect opportunity um, now that we're getting more towards the, the mounting uh, mm. on the actual person is the two big things that uh, kill everyone, I think, are um, chest hair and sweat, I guess. Uh, they're both, uh, are both um, yeah, they're both kind of key players in that. We've had a few questions just about uh, as the straps dealing with temperature and the washing and washing temperature and drying time. Some people All right. Some... Yeah, you can wash them uh, at 30, preferably at 30. You can wash them at 40 if you want. Originally, we just said um, wash them at 30, but I don't think there's any problem with a very, very, very early batch. We, we didn't, we avoided washing, but now we've fixed that. So you can wash them at 30, 40. But I don't really recommend tumble drying them, though. Um, just let them dry naturally. They will dry pretty fast. Um, uh but yeah washing at 30 uh, would recommend that or hand washing um yeah uh fantastic but, so i but, guess but, yeah just chest hair is the yeah, chest hair. is the killer if you, can, if you can cut it cut it seriously um obviously talk to makeup because if they're ever having a scene involving them taking their top off and they've got a little bit of that, <laughs> a nice square yeah a little square then you're going to get in trouble but um if they're guaranteed that they're not going to worry about it and the act is fine with it then generally in the past I've done this, I've, I've clipped it back or asked them to clip it back, created a little area, in, especially in front of the mic, so you don't get hair sort of scratching against the mic capsule itself. So it's, it is kind of part of, I wouldn't say it's out of bounds. I wouldn't say that it, you, can, you can bring it up. I always say like, yeah. if you asked, I, I try to try it. But if, if that's a no-go, um, uh, then you basically, oh, I mean, there isn't always, there isn't one solution to. No, of this. course not. No. But what we do is when you apply the sticky tape to someone's skin, and if it's just got sweaty skin, um, then we always have these sort of um, dermatologically tested uh, wipes, right? So you can wipe them, wipe, just like uh, wipe for uh, getting the moisture off, um, getting the grease and the sweat off someone's skin. It, it'll wipe away the oil, oiliness of the skin, it'll dry quite quickly. And then, then apply the tape because you're applying it to non sort of uh, oily skin. And that way, so long as it, you don't take it off and put it back on again, even if they do start sweating, at least you've applied it to a, a non oily part of the skin. And actually, it will stay on a lot longer if you just start off by doing that. You might be able to stick, stick a, a Vico sticky or your sticky tape to someone's skin, but if you didn't apply that to it first, the chances of it falling off are much higher. Um, so I just got some like baby wipes for that purpose, and we keep them in the kit all the time. Got it. Fantastic. Yeah, because yeah, a lot of people are wondering just about what well, actual tape, the name of the tape. I guess you can use any loads of different types of tape as long uh, as again it's. Um... Uh, I mean, I use a lot of 3M stuff. So this is the pouch I use. 
And this is 3M Durapore. So I stick this to people's skin. This is hypoallergenic. It's really handy because you can peel it like that. It's called Durapore. There's Transpore as well. So you get these cool little strips you can use. So that's great. Just get the cable and just a little bit of that there and maybe a little one here. So I used to use tiny bits of this and I apply that to skin if necessary. Um, but otherwise I'll, I'll tape up on people's costumes because I don't really like pulling skin, pulling tape off hairs unless I have to. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, uh, in terms of the name of the tape I used again, if you want to see that more clearly, it's called Super Tape. There you go. Super Tape. And it's good. Um, but uh, there are others. Um, yeah, medical tape is something yeah. we've been around. Uh, I guess Top Stick in America. Top that's stick. a big name that, yeah. yeah. Everyone. Some of them are slightly, that's, that stuff's really good, because look, check this out. You don't often get this with tape, right? It's kind of like, um, if you've tried GACTAC, GACTAC kind of has, so this is what it looks like when you take Super Tape apart. It's got kind of a cool stretch, and you can kind of, if you wanted to, you could get a, uh, say, if, say you're dealing with a COS 11, you see that? Yep. You can take it, you can kind of roll the tape onto itself, and then you roll it around the mic, like that. So you can actually create this kind of gacky, this is, yeah, it creates a whole messy gacky thing, but that inside a tie or between two layers, sticks the two layers together and provides space for the actual capsule to breathe in. And, and if there's enough of it, and it's not covering the capsule, then that's actually a pretty good solution to dealing with fabric rubbing against the mic because it's obviously provides space and it sticks the two layers together and it's really sticky and it's pretty pretty easy to apply in a in a hurry and i guess the key to, the key for that as well is uh, like dress shirts as well that's an, a key example of like two layers being together um and so having it having it stuck all together yeah i mean i used i used it like that when I'm say if I've got a button shirt and I want to put it under the button, I'd apply a bit of that tack to stick it under the button and sub and also stick it onto the shirt, so it's solidly in one place. The only problem is it's not black, so it might sh it might appear a little bit more shiny on camera. But I would really, really avoid using black tack on costumes because it's it will yeah. leave a residue. It will leave a residue, especially on a white shirt, and you will get in serious trouble because that stuff doesn't wash out very easily. Um, but um, you can also get this stuff, I could call it gag tack or snot tape or Joe's sticky stuff. It comes in a variety of different shapes and sizes and colors, but it comes in a roll like this and you can pull it out. It's very similar to what I've just done with super tape, but it's basically prepped and ready to go. So that again, you can apply that to a, one of these and gag tack really easy. A lot of people use this. And that's just before it's stuck straight onto the concealer like that. And it basically does the same kind of job. Yeah. Magic. Um, <laughs> sticking down like noisy things, like zippers. If you've got a zipper attacking away, a little bit of this under the zipper, that will save you. That will save the scene sometimes. So having some sticky stuff. Yeah, and there's stupid like poppers sometimes on like jackets, yeah. just like flicking. So annoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what they call those jackets, but you literally have to take this stuff and go inside it and stick it into the inside of the, each one individually. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Um, one thing we were uh, we kind of started touching on, uh, but it was when um, when we fell off, uh, was um, hair miking. And does yeah. uh, does Ursa have any solutions at the moment for? Well, we hair we tech? Don't have like where well, there is already well, there's no point trying to do stuff if there's already really good solutions available. And and for hair miking, there really is. And it comes, but well, this is the expensive way of doing it. Um, it noise Toys, N O Y Z T O Y Z. Can you see that? It's a little clip which someone's applied elastic to. So it's basically the same as a normal hair clip, but they applied this little bit of elastic here, right? And if you wind your COS 11, your mic, or whatever, under here, and then you get a couple of these in a row, get your makeup person to form a, a gap in the hair, they separate it from one side, then this clip goes into the hair and then clicks in to place, like that, so it's clipped, now that's solid. 
um, get a few of those. You can use these to rig mics in here. And then you just basically anywhere sort of up here, or even here, or perfect is up here, you're gonna you're gonna get a good sound out of a, a radio mic. These things sound fantastic if they're in hair or, or under a helmet or something like that. So yeah, I'd recommend um, if you have to use, do a lot of hair rigs to get some hair clips like this, uh, noise toys hair clips. And then the only trouble then is how to hide the cable around the around the neck. If someone's got long hair, obviously it's fine. It's all under there. It's all under their uh, hair. But if it's not, you've got to be a bit cunning with the cable, and you've got to sort of twist it. You've got to stick it down with the head back like this, and then twist it so that it doesn't bulk out at the back. So there's lots. Of, it's just trial and error, and you, you really I can't explain it. You just yeah. have to do it um, a few times. But really, it's about that particular one. It's about working with the hair and makeup department. And, uh, and getting them on side. No, and it is fantastic when you can get that mount straight there, especially if people are wearing like beanies or yeah. books with caps as well. It's fantastic. And again, yeah, the long hair, the key is the neck area. Or you, I suppose you could be a bit adventurous if, if the people aren't turning around in the scene <laughs> and it's yeah. just like two cross shots. Sometimes you don't necessarily have to, uh, yeah, do, do more work than you have to, but it's yeah. making it, it, sure you're prepared as well, though. That's the yeah. key. <laughs> if you've got a small transmitter and putting it in the hat itself or in the helmet, um, then then that's the best solution to try and put the whole bloody lot right up there. Um, uh, but um, not often that happens. But we had a film where we almost exclusively had helmets and mics and helmets, and it was brilliant. It made it made made for the film to have the intimate sound throughout. And it was great. So yeah, it's definitely worth trying um, hair mics and don't. don't and often you just don't think about it as well. You often think, oh, I'm having all trouble with this, and it doesn't, you just don't think that it's an option. Um, but you do need to be, re you do need to have the kit ready, and you do need to be prepped. Uh, you can't just think of it five minutes before you shoot, because they'll literally have to go back to make up, and it's, uh, it takes a bit of time. Yeah. Fantastic. So I think we've, um, we've done a pretty good job pretty much covering every area in terms of, of the actual mic placement, for instance, stuck mm -hmm. in between the concealers for the dress shirt. You can obviously rig it to the hair. Hiding it in ties, we've covered loads. Um, uh, yeah, uh, what have we talked about? Tie just, no, go on. Tie, tie mics, I don't know, tie, tie mics, like we, we're having real troubles at the minute on a job I'm on with a particular tie. And we tried putting the mic like, like this is so here you go, here's a tie. Um, we tried putting the mic literally under this section here in a hush. Ah, okay. Because there's actually quite a lot of natural space here where where uh, you can put mics, but that often it's very, very difficult to get a good sound in that space under the knot um, because it's because you'll get a lot of rustle and it will just sound quite covered up. So, um, but what we ended up doing is basically using a countryman. And bringing the countryman right out for the wide shots and then bringing it right in and just using the boom on the tight shots because that way he can keep the radio mic on we don't have to take it off after the wide shots but we can just push the mic right up it won't affect the the look of his tie and they're very particular they need the ties to look just perfect no lumps you know, like tight royals you know really sort of uh, tight knots so so we've just thought right okay well they sound good when they're exposed. We use countrymen, we push them out, the wide shots and mediums, and then we, or we move it. If they're like this, we'll move the mic to the other side of the tie, or it'll be in the shadows or something like that. Um, but yeah, I, I, and, that, and once the mic's exposed from the fabric layers, it will be a lot cleaner and sound usable, whereas the moment it's kind of under these layers, it will instantly have that muffled sound. And um, that's kind of it. I mean, like literally moving it to shot unfortunately, um, is sometimes the best solution, getting the mic exposed and then just hiding it when you have to. Uh, and we've got a question, is how do you cover the wire on the neck if the microphone is in hair position? Um, I guess yeah. in regards to that scenario, it's just trying to, yeah, trying to cover it with something. Hide trying the mic to... on the neck. Yeah. Well, you know, in theatre world, they will just, they will just have, this is a, they will just have the mic doing that and they'll tape it there and you don't see it because they're on a stage yeah. but in teleworld um yeah of course if you have a mic and you don't have exactly the right color and you're in a close-up then there's not a lot you can do about that 
Um, yeah. But the best thing to do is when you tape it down, to make it make sure that it fo folds into the skin like that, rather than out like that, so you don't have it bulging. See, so it doesn't sort of when they bend the neck, the mic doesn't pop out, but it actually folds in. So it just means twisting the mic before you tape it down. And yeah, you can get obviously different mics for different colors. So trying uh, trying to a beige sometimes might work, but again, everyone's skin tone is completely yeah. different as well. So exactly. some brown is a great color for a mic. I've got a brown DPA. We use that quite a lot, even on sort of you know it's actually a great it's a great all-round color actually and i just wanted to cover steve allen uh just asking does everyone know about the capsule downward in the bottom of the knot and yeah just in the top what you would do is in top of the knot um yeah you just actually you've got a tie you can if you just demonstrate and poke your finger down it. Uh, um, but <clears throat> so yeah the the mic capsule preferably you're using a cos most people do use coses and ties because they are a they are a lovely sounding mic and they're small enough you won't see a lump. But most people will just literally have it coming out just a little teeny bit. And if you look carefully on some TV dramas, you will see a cause just poking out of that tie. Um, and um, so, yeah, put it, sticking it into a tie and having it just exposed at the bottom uh, is, a, is a pretty good solution for ties. DPAs um, in ties will create a bit more of a lump. Um, but if you're, yeah, but if you just, use DPAs and uh, you're going to have more trouble with ties basically in DPAs. It's possible, but you know, you have to do what you have to move it a bit more. Yeah. I, I think just like with any, any microphones, you need a range of microphones that are, yeah. are kind of fit for purpose. Like you were saying with the uh, countrymen's, you don't just all have countrymen's just because they're yeah. thin. Yeah. You know, you don't use it for every scenario. We'd only use it for some circumstances uh, where you really have to, and you've got some, my opinion. but if you have a tie night a tie and sometimes people come on set and their ties just have this massive hole in the middle like that and and if costume are okay with that because you never rig the mic before they do their checks you almost always do the mic rigging with costume right there so that they're like well why did you do that i haven't even done it up yet and then they have to move it all and then you have to move all your tape so it's really worth just letting them supervise you doing the tie because it could easily be that they have to then adjust it again, and then you have to move it again. So, um, so yeah. Um, but if they're happy for a massive hole to be there naturally, then use it and put a big mic in it like a DPA, because you can get away with it. And then on those occasions, you can you can even put moleskin tape on the mic like we did there, and help a bit with rustling. Or you can put a hush lab in there. If it's big enough, you can get a hush lab in there, and they're even better. That would be like the best solution is to put that sort of thing and then, then the sides never touch the mic itself. Yeah, the more space, the better, I guess. So it's just figuring out how much you can uh, yeah. get away with. Um, and we've got Greg asking um, whether we prefer the mic in the knot or behind the tie mid chest. Oh, right. I, I, I know think I'd preferably go for the knot, maybe. Yeah, I think I think. I think it's behind the tie. Do you mean like behind the tie is in on the skin or on the t-shirt behind the tie or like? I think literally behind the tie, like it's, um, if for instance, if they've got a dress shirt on, you're, you're coming out of the middle of the chest and kind of sticking it to the back of the tie. Oh, right. So you're sticking it sort of there on, on a tie. Yeah. Yeah, I tried that. Tricky. Because if the tie moves and you've got a cable and you've got, if your tie is naturally moving and you're moving and sticking it there, there is a chance that ties falling out from the chest you might see that cable but i have tried putting mics in that area before and generally i've not been that happy because generally ties are quite thick and strangely i get better sound when i stick it to their t-shirt or i stick it to their body like their skin and sometimes that actually has a better sound to me than than trying to work if you've got a particularly difficult tie then just avoid it and stick it somewhere else um, and you might get better sound uh, on if you just stick it on the mic onto the skin. Uh, yeah, that's true, I guess, because you've got the base of the voice then, and you're actually picking up more, uh, helping to drown out, I guess, extra fabric. If you have time, put two mics on someone. Put, put Literally, put one in the tie and one somewhere else, be it on the jacket, on the lapel, on the jacket, or onto the skin, or an alternative position, because it might be that ties sound great until they do that thing with them, or until they touch them, or... It, <laughs> and if you need it for the entire scene, then I, I've often put two mics on one actor, one in the tie and one somewhere else. And it sort of is a really good backup solution. And uh, when, you, when you're obviously 
you don't want to use the boom wherever possible. Uh, but we're talking here about radio mics. But <laughs> yeah, um, and, and radio mics are more and more important anyway. So we, we do have to try and find find ways of making them work um, all the time, basically. Yeah. And I guess we should, because um, we've covered so much now. And thank you, everyone, for just getting involved um, in the comments as well and even helping each other out. It's really interesting just oh. hearing everyone else's views. Um, <laughs> But with, um, yeah, let's just move on to our kind of final area and just touch on a few kind of um, like best practices for hiding yeah. hiding the cable. I mean, we've already touched on the mic if you've got a hair rig. Um, yeah. If it's, so maybe let's just touch on um, wiring down the front as opposed to wiring down the back. Some of the advantages of that, like are you always, so I find that some people are always, like always go down the front. Some people religiously just going, uh, hiding it down the back first in terms down, of the cable. To go down the back to get to put it there, but go down the back. Uh, yeah, some people, for instance, have the pack on the back go all the way up round, oh. and I've seen people uh, stick it there. Some people are always down the front. Yeah. Um, I guess it's again trial and error for everyone's everyone's own purposes. Um, but I guess for knots. It's going to be better if it's down the back because again you've got you're taking away all this kind of uh, cable noise yeah. potentially down the front. The main thing with cables is that you have slack. Basically, you just have a bit of slack between basically from here on a mic to about here. It's bloody noisy, like noising, scratching. So if you just if you just listen to a mic and you just run your finger down it like that, you will hear <laughs> like that. So about to about there. It's really sensitive to noise and will pick up noise. So generally, if that's tight, and it's say if you stick, if you just take it on someone, and you just um, you just rig it like that, and then you just let the cable hang down like that, and if they move and it's caught, then this because this isn't sort of locked off against anything, and if that does rub, then I can feel it moving on my body, and that will then create noise that you will hear. So what I will always do with the cable, and no, I don't do that, by the way. I don't do that and then put it there. Um, I, I, if I had a pack on the back and small on the back, I would, um, I would basically do it just one way, which is pretty straightforward. I would bring the mic up here, around the side on the side seam of a costume. I would stick the mic here, somewhere here where I'm happy, and then it would be a nice sort of loose-ish loop, which would be locked off by a bit of tape just there. So. There is so there'll be a bit of slack here um, to allow the body to move around, but also that 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 stuck down bit there really helps avoid cable noise madly. madly. I mean, if you're really if you're really determined to stop cable noise, and I've never done this, but I, I've seen people do it, is you make a knot in the cable. <laughs> but I've I've never done that, but it does work. Um, so if you're ever really screwed with cable noise, and you can put a knot in the cable, but like um. I generally find that having a bit of slack, putting it like that. If you if you're doing a time mic though, I very rarely rig um, the cable up and then over the top of the tie and then down. Usually, if they're wearing a jacket, then you put the mic preferably in the side pocket of the jacket, and then you rig the mic up the back, and then sort of stick it under the tie, go, and then it goes under the tie itself, and then it goes out and it goes into the tie from from here. Um, and that way you can stick it under the tie itself. It goes into the knot really easily. You just push the cable under the tie and you can you can hide it quite effectively like that. But if they're not wearing a jacket and they've got a loose tie and then one of the buttons is undone on the shirt and you're trying to get it inside a tie knot, it's like uh, you literally have to make a hole in the shirt to do that. You have to cut a hole back here to thread it through under the tie. Um, or because it's too difficult to get the cable into the tie knot on a loose tie with buttons undone. I've tried it in the past, and you end up with a cable in shot, basically, uh, unless you're really, really stuck, stuck it down. And <sighs> so, yeah. But yeah, yeah. That's sort of vaguely talking about cable. Yeah, pressure. yeah. And uh, there's there's one that I do as well with um, just making sure that you always have uh, enough tension or oh, not enough tension like enough slack and that's the old like turn it turn it around and and kind of put a bit of tape on it so if it does yeah. pull um uh, i've never looped it though i've never looped i've never done that and looped it i don't uh, know about, but maybe maybe you can do that maybe that's not a bad idea yeah, yeah i mean for me it just it just goes um flat 
so it's it's not that it um, ruffles up or anything because you, you're twisting both cables at the same time, so they line up. Um, it's just an interesting way to um, if you need additional, otherwise, as opposed to leaving it um, yeah. leaving it with space as well. But again, all of these things you've got to kind of take with a pinch of salt, depending on your scenario. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, but I think that pretty much covers it, doesn't it? I mean, we've literally talked about absolutely everything, and it's it's been an hour or so <laughs> that we've been talking. Um, there was one cool thing, if I can find it, because concealers have changed a little bit over the last couple of months. Yeah, if you've got a DPA, do check out these. Can you see that? Is that something? Uh, yeah, with the hook. Wire? So this DPA comes, and, comes apart, so it's, it comes in two sections like that. So you put the mic in, and then you literally close the concealer onto itself. So that, and then, and then if you want, you can put this wire in there, and it kind of clicks in, and then that little wire avoid it does the same as say putting foam over the concealer. So that's kind of we've used these a bit, and they've been quite effective. Um, uh, so I'd I'd kind of recommend playing around with the new ones. You can't cut them though, so that's annoying. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do my thing where I cut them down, and I often need to re reduce. I need. I often need to get my sort of black or, or dark tape and to, to hide. You know, you have got one of these white concealers and against a costume which is not white, and you need to sort of hide it in the shadow. So I often find myself not putting a, not using a, a sharpie, but instead putting some black moleskin tape and, and using black moleskin tape to sort of disguise the concealer uh, like that. As I sort of demonstrated earlier before we got cut off, um, yeah. Oh, fantastic! I think I think this is a really good point. Just to, um, yeah, I don't know. Just to wrap up everything again, it's an, it's one of these topics where you can literally just go on for for hours and hours and hours. There's just a few. Uh, oh, does Ursa straps do a two uh, receiver strap? Yes. Yeah, double pack strap. Go. Yeah, we, we've been pretty crap at uh, trying to explain that on our website. But yes, we do. We have it in. We have a double pack one, and it comes in the big pouch size only um, because generally people might want to put a receiver and a transmitter. And most receivers are a bit bigger than transmitters. Transmitters are the thing that they're miniaturizing, whereas receivers sometimes are a bit larger. So we thought, well, we'll just standardize it so it's straightforward. It's a medium sized black or beige double pouch strap. Um, and yeah, most yeah, that, those those have been available for, for since we've launched. Perfect. And Ursa sold in USA. Greg Palmer, I haven't forgotten you. <laughs> sold uh, in the US yet? Uh, no, we're not selling them in the US. You can buy the chest straps in the US. Uh, you can buy the soft circles, the tape when it comes out. The straps at the minute is a really contentious issue. It's pretty difficult to sort of talk about it uh, on, on in, in this format. Yeah. No, um, but I'm afraid right now um, people are finding ways of getting them. They don't involve us. There are people who've got them in America. Um, and there are, there are obviously dealers in Canada and other dealers elsewhere. But we just we, we are at this present moment not able to sell our straps in the U.S. Um, I'm sure you probably know why, but I don't really want to. I can't really go no, into No, 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 of course. It's just uh, just to answer the yeah. question. Um, yeah. Greg's always a keen commenter on all the videos. <laughs> so, well, yeah, um, we, we, hope so. we hope that we can resolve this soon uh, because, um, you know, they're, they're a product that a lot of people want to get their hands on. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it's fun. It's been fantastic having you on. Thank you very much for uh, just making all the time as well. Do you want to just uh, plug your <laughs> Facebook, social media? Like, how are people going to be able to get in touch with you with their that's a related question. All right. Um, yeah, just um, basically, if you uh, message Ursa Straps Facebook page, that's fine. I'll get that straight away. Um, always try to sort of answer questions. If you've got anything you need to know about the product or any questions at all, um, I, I'm there to answer those questions. Um, yeah, we've got other cool products coming out soon. Um, uh, I wanted to announce one of them now, but I, I, we're just not ready yet. But yeah, we've got other radio mic solutions. So we're hoping to branch out from straps into into other areas to, to all, all within the field of sound recording and, and making people's lives on set easier, including my own. Um, yeah, which ultimately is, that's how it started. <laughs> just trying to make something, get something which, uh, which I wanted to use, that I was happy to use. And then I thought, well, if I like it, then maybe other people will like it. 
Well, that's the key. It's the, yeah. it's the classic thing of you don't have this thing where there's just a, an engineer somewhere who can just make it in, in theory, and then you, you classically get said product or whatever, and then you go, oh, does this person even like know? Like, I find so much with like cameras. People are like, the camera people are actually like, why the hell have they like labeled it this? It doesn't make any sense. Like formatting being changed to initializing and stuff like that. <laughs> so yeah. no, it's 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 good. You actually and again, like still, it's not like you've like chosen to retire. You're still like working in the no, industry. No, no. And doing I, I find, like I don't. I I think it should be possible for freelancers, like as we are all freelancers, to have other strings to the bow. That's what people say, isn't it? To have a yeah. going on, and I think it's perfectly possible for people these days to do that and it's, it's evidently happening lots of other people are getting involved in making their own products and using social media as a way of distributing it um, because that's work for us work for you too if you have a good idea I see no reason why you know individuals shouldn't you know come up with ideas and and sort of uh, produce their own products you know 3d printers um, are making it possible to do your own products so I think it's really great that lots of people are trying and Doing and, and doing things because you know that's that's always you know been one of the joys of this industry is that you can can sort of the community is really strong and everyone helps each other and we've definitely had that with us straps with the community helping us give us feedback and help us along and it's been really great so and yeah thank you <laughs> no that's all right so yeah I'm gonna end this here if you've been on the live stream we've had like uh, consistently about 40 50 people watching. Pretty much the whole time, which is pretty insane. Um, again, it's yeah one of these topics we will go on forever. It's something that I will try and uh, maybe cover again in uh, kind of smaller sections of video. Again, my kind of format for just trying to get as much content out there as possible uh, yeah. is sometimes very sporadic and all over the place. <laughs> but I thought that this was a good way to kind of put everything together. I think we've hit pretty much every single time zone as well. Um, okay. So, yeah. so, I mean, if anyone's got any more questions about it, then maybe we could sort of have some little text-based responses later or something. Or is there anything outstanding that people have got? Ah, uh, there's nothing in the in the uh, cool. tips for now. No, there's just um, again, we just end up getting into more uh, yeah. specific scenarios. Uh, yeah. I've already done some videos before on like trying to hide it in polo shirts and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but again, it's it's one of these cases where. Uh, I guess we should sum up. Let's um, yeah, let's do a quick summation. So, body pack hiding. We've got from bottom to top. We've got ankle strap. We've got thigh strap. We've got chest strap. Uh, we've got waist strap. We've got <laughs> hiding the <laughs> hiding the pack uh, in the actual costume in a jacket pocket. In a yeah. um, sometimes yeah. you can hide them in jean pockets or ideally just clip it to the back. Again, yes. if you get if you get problems with um, actors not wanting it on, you kind of just have to explain it. Most actors should be uh, amenable to having a radium mic pack on them and be useful. There's a clip. Clips are handy. Have, have clips if you can. Some people don't like straps. Some people prefer clips. <laughs> Definitely. If it's a long, especially if it's a long and especially hot scene, maybe <laughs> as well. Um, then uh, we talked about kind of hiding the transmitter. Again, I mean, I, I always want to say transmitter, hiding the, the microphone. Um, I'm getting confused with transducer, obviously. Um, hiding it with, um, hiding it in the chest. We've talked about hiding it in the tie. You can hide it in the top of the head, yeah. and then you get kind of perfect orientation following you as opposed to maybe you don't want to mic one side more than the other unless it's a specific scenario because otherwise it's all really good here and then suddenly you won't yeah. be able to hear the person. Um, in terms of just hiding that wire as well, it's tricky uh, if you're hiding on a top mic if they have no hair at the back, you just have, have to kind of be a bit lucky with that. Um, check your shots, check how it looks. Um, mm. What else then? Yeah. For the center of the chest, hiding it kind of hairy chest and sweaty sweaty skin, yeah. So sort of yeah, yeah, getting it getting it to work on on the body and on the skin. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, do you know what one thing we haven't talked about? Reducing heartbeats. Oh we had a, the other yeah. day, a really strong heartbeat. And it was like, how are we gonna avoid that? And we ended up using literally a, a bit of foam with tape on either side stuck to the concealer. And that it didn't stop it completely, but a little foam layer between the skin and the concealer helped a great deal uh, in, in avoiding that. Because some heartbeats can actually be pretty difficult to filter out, I think. Um, that if someone's got a deep voice and they've got a deep heartbeat and it's quite strong, 
you might struggle to, to get rid of that sound. So yeah, dealing with heartbeats is definitely something. You don't hear it on rehearsals, and then you go for a take, and suddenly the oh, they've got the pressure. Yeah, yeah, when you, when you hear it. So heartbeats are pretty uh, tricky sometimes to handle. Yeah, heartbeats. yeah, that's amazing. And do you? I guess you record some sort of like uh, rough wild track for that as well. Maybe when you do, you try and get that as a separate thing. No, no. Like sometimes the director loves it. He thinks, oh wow, heartbeats. But well, usually they're they're distracted by it. So. Yeah. Uh, it's sort of some, somehow it becomes our problem, um, but yeah, yeah, that can be one thing. No, fantastic. So that was the. Oh yeah, yeah. go. On. Yeah, no, I think we covered loads of stuff. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I think that's I think that's pretty much it. So again, thank you very much to everyone. Thanks for all the love. Everyone's saying uh, thank you, goodbye. Probably the best video out on this subject now, which is I mean massive <laughs> compliment. <laughs> thank you, Steve. Um, yeah. So again. You can get in touch with me, of course, in my usual place, just sitting here constantly just making videos <laughs> on whatever I'm doing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I never leave. No, I do leave. <laughs> um, yeah, and I will, yeah, well, this is a good uh, leap, leap off point um, as well to just do further videos down the line. Now we've figured out, because um, mm -hmm. there is so much to cover, it's just trying to make um, yeah, more specific content on that. But you can, of course, subscribe. There's lots of other good stuff. You can like this video. You can share this video. And um, yeah, we can uh, yeah do this again sometime, as they say. Yeah, um, cool. yeah. There, there's probably lots of other subject matters to cover um, that, that, that we could use a little inf informative video. But for the time being, it's a bank holiday. Let's yes. make the most of it. Let's get back to oh. having cider and <laughs> Some sort of sun, maybe, hopefully. Good to chat. <laughs> All right.